You know, I think one of the things we remember most about him is just he just had an incredible smile and, and liked to please people. And um, yeah, I mean, we did a lot together as a family. You know, we, um, I mean, we camped, we hiked, we were in scouts. Um, you know, we were weren't really ones that you know would drop our kids off. You know, so I was a scout master. You know, I was the coach. Um, you know, we camped together, we, you know, went skiing together, you know, we did everything together. And he went to uh, Peachland Elementary, and when he graduated, he went to Placerita Junior High, and then on to Hart High School. Yeah, we've got five kids, and our neighbors all always enjoyed Cameron. They said, wow, he's just so personable and just such a great young man, and, and uh, you know, just had a really great attitude. But uh, no, I think just that the personality, just, uh, you know, you met him one time, and you just were instantly attracted to him. Heroin usage primarily within the upper middle class of Santa Clarita has been a pressing issue for nearly two decades. The following provides the various drug schedules constructed by the Drug Enforcement Administration of most medical and recreational drugs seen today. Schedule 5 having the least potential for drug abuse and Schedule 1 having the most potential, we can see that heroin is currently scheduled as a Schedule 1 drug, posing very severe psychological or physical dependence for the user. A man who has overdosed on heroin is seen here. Within the family-oriented community of Santa Clarita, the widespread usage of heroin, an opioid painkiller, has primarily impacted the lives of adolescents and people in their early 20s since the 1990s. It has been reported that approximately 1 million Americans intake heroin on a daily basis. Within the Santa Clarita Valley, it has been reported that most of the incidents have primarily involved the Caucasian, upper-middle-class community. As teenagers continue to develop, they are constantly being subjected to social and structural expectations, and with poor judgment and the exposition of peer pressure together, they resort to drugs such as heroin. Not only do those around them affect their choices, but messages portrayed in the media within movies such as Pulp Fiction play a huge role in the process as well. How can we be sure this is a phenomenon we should be concerned about? Studies have shown throughout the course of three years from 2012, 37 deaths have been recorded within Santa Clarita alone. Since 2013, these numbers have been increasing exponentially, including reports of non-fatal instances of heroin use. Those that become dependent on this drug virtually always show severe withdrawal symptoms if attempted to stop and require higher doses to fulfill the high. According to research, the likelihood of an individual or group benefiting from this issue is virtually non-existent. However, those who pay the price are shown by the mother of Alex from Saugus High School. Cemetery, like, I never was at a cemetery, like, hardly at all in my life. And the first many, many, many months, more than, I don't know, first nine months or something, I was there, like, every day. I lived about ten minutes from there. And it's like you're, you're going through the motions. It's like you have a dead child. He's never going to come home. You're never going to see him, like, get married. You're never going to see him have kids or finish college. And, and, you know, all of his friends and people his age are going on and living their lives in a productive way or whatever, or they're partaking in whatever they were. And, you know, I, I mean, I can't do anything to change them per se, because people are going to still, these kids are going to still keep doing what they're doing. In partnership with the City of Santa Clarita, public schools located in Santa Clarita have joined together to form what is known as the Drug-Free Youth in Town organization to raise awareness of the dangers of living a drug-dependent life and support those seeking to better themselves. 
a girl speaks out on her experience in Defy. I've been in Defy for two years, and last year I think was the first year that it was offered at our school. I learned, especially from the Youth Summit, that you're never alone. If you're ever offered, that if you even try, you're going to be going down a pretty bad road, and it's pretty hard to come back up. So it's better just not to go there at all. Your participation in Defy will push the organization one step closer towards a safer and healthier Santa Clarita youth community. Learn more at defyitscv.com.